There comes a time, I mean, I've had young chefs here uh, work a station for three months and say, okay, what's next? And I say, well, you've done that dish a hundred times. Ask me when you've done it a thousand times. This episode made possible by Restaurant Systems Pro. Well, this is what's called a shotgun. Yeah. In New Orleans architecture, this is called a shotgun because you can stand at the front door and shoot a shotgun all the way down. We learned all about shotguns right? last night. <laughs> and so, see that. this is Paul and I and Marna. Oh, wow. When we got the restaurant. Well, um, That's awesome. 1986. What a jovial looking dude, huh? Yes, very much so. Okay. So, you got the shotgun because it's a straight line from the front door to the yes. back door. Uh, what, what else was it about the space that? Well, I love the intimacy of it, and, and as a chef, uh, the size of this restaurant is very similar to, to that of Cape Paul, so I knew operationally it was something I could handle. It was a good fit for you. Yeah, yeah. It, it was a scale that I was very comfortable with, and um, you know, I, the uptown area of New Orleans is a uh, um, very special place. I think it's the heart of the city. And there's a lot of diners here. Mm. So a lot of them have become regulars over the years. Uh, Miss Leah Chase, uh, the doyen of Creole cuisine, um, not, no longer with us. But this was um, 2006 at the James Beard Awards. Yes. Um, each year at the Beard Awards, there's a theme to the reception. And they invite chefs to come cook. Uh, that year, the theme was New Orleans restaurants, and uh, I was one of the chefs asked to come up and cook, and I said, Melanie, of course I'll come, but I want five minutes on stage to talk about New Orleans. And so that year's humanitarian award was given collectively to the restaurants of New Orleans. And Miss Lee and I went up to accept, and, I can also do and it was it, uh, or the best speech I ever made. What? Okay. What was significant about the speech? Why? Why was it important to you? <clears throat> well, as we discussed earlier, um, myself and other New Orleanians uh, and felt and that question? our culture was at stake. The mm. future of our culture uh, was critically at stake. Mm -hmm. And so it was a short speech, um, and I don't remember all of it. It was a handwritten thing on a piece of paper. Um, what was the essence? But I began by saying shrimp po' boys, red beans and rice, oysters Rockefeller. By that time, people were crying. And then I spoke about the importance of food uh, as a culture bearer. Mm. And that's what our restaurants were. Mm -hmm. When we reopened on that December 29th, it was a glorious weekend. Uh, we wanted to be open for New Year's Eve, but I'm not stupid enough to open on New Year's <laughs> Eve. So we had two days to get back in the swing. And it was all of our local friends. Yeah. And uh, we heard thank you so many times. Grabbing my arm. I love thank it. you, Frank. Thank you for coming back. I love it. We were beacons of hope and culture. And um, on New Year's Eve, which is a big night for us, um, we have a couple from Oklahoma City that eats with us every New Year's Eve. They got married in New Orleans on New Year's Eve. So they come celebrate with us. And during our uh, shutdown period, he had seen a photograph of the restaurant all boarded up for the hurricane. In the aftermath, it was still boarded up. And I left our sign out during the hurricane, and one of the chains had broken, and the sign was just like dangling. He called Marner and asked if he could have that sign, because they collect New Orleans menus, restaurant stuff. And uh, I said, he can't have that one, but I have the previous one, and I'll give him that one. So they came to eat, and I uh, had the sign for them. 
And he said, can we go out on the porch and take a picture of the four of us with the sign? I said, sure, let's go out. So we went out in the middle of the night. The neighborhood's still pitch black. There's nobody here. People are still gone. We were the only lights in the neighborhood. So as we're standing there, we hear second line music, a band, marching band. It was about 50 people from Oak Street come marching, banging drums, blowing horns, stopped here and serenaded us to wow. welcome us home. Wow, that's amazing. Ah. That's the power that is of powerful. music and food mm -hmm. and culture. That's culture, absolutely. It's what gave us the strength to recover. I've been really. And that's when I realized how powerful my work is and mm. can be. Yeah to make a difference in people's lives. Give them two hours to sit in a bubble of joy and happiness with their family and friends. That's mm -hmm. what chefs have the power to do. Yes. To make a difference. And it needs to be, it needs to be shared. You yes. Know? Uh, that, this is the essence, this is what we're about, this is what, it, this is what we stand for. And I think it's important that you echo that for the next generation. Thank you for sharing that. Pleasure. Uh, so what's, what's this desk mean to you? So, when we reopened in 2020, uh, we were very conscious of uh, minimizing congregating as much as possible in the restaurant. Um, I put up plexiglass shields in the kitchen, as you'll see. And uh, the kitchen is so small. There's normally, uh, with myself, eight people in there during service. And so it's just too tight. So. Um, I found myself without a home, <laughs> but, and so uh, Marna and and Ron and Sandy put this gave me this table to be my spot. Yeah. So this is my new landing spot, uh, yeah. just like Chef Paul had. I don't have a phone on mine, but, um, but and so you know. Someone had this made for me. I did not make that. <laughs> These are awesome. Kids, boyfriend, and girlfriend. <laughs> so who, who are these people? Susan Spicer and me. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I, uh, one customer brings us this every year, a new sign. Yeah. One lady who I'd never met, who's crafty. Heard about it from a friend, started researching me, and put my life story into an apron. Wow. I swear to God. Here's me with Chef Paul, teaching at Nichols, James Beard Award winner, my dog Bella, the three sisters, working at Commanders, then going to K Paul's, then opening Brightson's. Deeply rooted in New Orleans, reopened after Katrina. Awesome. My Thank life you. story in April. There comes a time, I mean, I've had young chefs here uh, work at stations for three months and say, okay, what's next? And I say, well, you've done that dish a hundred times. Ask me when you've done it a thousand times. Because you get good when you're not thinking anymore. Mm -hmm. It's just like a football player. Great college football star gets drafted in the NFL, a linebacker. And his first year, he's struggling. He's making mistakes. He's getting beat. And as they'll tell you, he's thinking too much. It hasn't become natural yet. But with experience and repetition, that player will get better because he won't have to think so much. He'll be following his instincts and react naturally. And the problem with repetition is that it's boring. And some people don't uh, embrace that for what it really is. And in our jobs as chefs, uh, repetition is the deal. Um, things change. Um, maybe staff changes, menu changes, specials are created. But it's the, the act of doing it over and over and over again that if that doesn't bring you joy, um, change it up.
Hello. This is uh, my podcast friends, Hello. Restaurant Unstoppable. Nice to meet you all. Eric, Sam, and Savannah. <laughs> Carrie and Amanda. Carrie. Nice Hi to meet you guys. Hi. How are you doing? Nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you. Welcome in. Watch your step. You've been in the kitchen before. Yeah. What do we got going on here, Chef? This is our butternut shrimp bisque, one of my most favorite dishes. This is smoked corn. Smoked corn. Making, uh, Larry's making Ooh. smoked corn sauce for our blackened tuna. This is our line. I call it a hyphen. <laughs> Not a whole line. Yeah. They grill and saute. Setting up Mr. Walter and Eldred. Hello. Two of the yeah, best. Yeah. Two of the best men in New Orleans brought me lunch. <laughs> That's the sound. This is Chef Larry Herbert. Excuse the chef. Thank this you. Is Eric. Nice to meet you, nice Chef. Meet you. Chef Elise. Hey. Hello, Rachel. Chef. Rachel, hello. Taj. Taj, nice to meet you. Thank you for letting These us into your space. These are all graduates of Nichols. Oh, wow. Awesome. Sadly, they had to take my class. But. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, gee. Oh, gee. Hey, guys. Hey. Olivia. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> Olivia, Olivia Givens. The OG. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you for showing us the chef. That, uh, as I tell my chefs, make every plate, every dish, like you're making it for your mama. Beautiful.